G'day folks, Rod here from Learn to Paint TV and More Art School of course. Happy New Year to you, welcome to 2018. I hope it's going to be a great year for you. I know it certainly is going to be for us here at Learn to Paint TV and More Art School. We've got a lot of very exciting projects planned and uh, continuing to develop the Learn to Paint TV show. So thank you for joining me once again. Now in today's episode, I thought what we'd do to kickstart the year is um, I was cleaning up the studio come garage over the Christmas holidays and I came across this little calendar book that my mum had had and um, she'd given it to me at some time and it's uh, it's Australian Impressionist um, and there's a whole lot of great paintings in here I'll just show you, you know, Ethel Carrick and so on um, and I was looking through it and thinking oh there's some really terrific paintings you know there's um, Unfortunately, my mother has written on it, which I don't know a word to her about that. But anyway, she gave this to me and I was flicking through it and I came across this painting by Tom Humphrey. It's called Summer Walk, painted in, 19, in 1888. And I just love the composition of that. Um, so I thought we would do our own little version of this just for something different to kickstart uh, 2015. I love this little meandering path. You've got the figure there, the woman, and there's a little house yeah, and look at the horizon line, it's really high up there. And uh, that composition really appeals to me. I've done a couple of paintings along that sort of line in the past. So we're going to have a go at this one today. And, uh, you know, we're not going to do it exactly the same as this. We're not going to copy this. We're just going to use this as a basis to create a nice, interesting composition. As always, we're going to start off with step one of the Moore Method, which is to do our drawing, get our composition right. And we're going to do our drawing with our ultramarine blue and a little and crimson. And I'm just going to use a little flat brush here just to, uh, you know, map out where our main objects and shapes are going to be in this painting. Going to have a bit of fun, get the cobwebs out to start the new year. So the first thing we want to do is establish the horizon line. What I like about this composition is the horizon line's up nice and high up there. And uh, the house itself... We'll just, we'll just put in a, a mark for the house and we, we'll think about how we want to shape that up as we go. Uh, and then there's some nicely placed trees to that section there. There's another tree scenario here, off in the distance, but behind that cottage, which I think is important. Okay, and then there's a row of sort of, oh, hang on, there's a bigger tree here, which is kind of, it's not quite in the center. So it, it runs sort of like that, and then out there. So it runs out of the top of the painting, runs to there, runs out that way. Okay, horizon line continues, although it goes downhill a little. And then there's some small bushes there. And then we have this bigger tree shape in here, which is going to run into some tree trunks around about there. I'll come back to that. Um, so the little house is here, it's a cottage. I mean, this was painted in 1888, so it's going to be a colonial style little cottage. We might put a veranda out in the front there and so on. And the path here, it meanders down that way, okay, and then it comes back that way, and then it comes back that way. So it's a classic S shape, okay? So think about everything in just in terms of being shapes. Uh, if you look at this path, it, and it probably wanders back that way a little bit, but if you look at this path, it's just really an S shape there, which makes our life a little bit easier. Now we'll, we'll um, obviously shape that up as we progress this on, but that's basically the shape that you want for the path, okay? It's gonna be wider at the bottom, it's gonna get narrower as it heads up there. Now there is a figure here, and if you're gonna do a figure, she's going to have to cut through, um, and I know we don't normally do figures, although I do have a course on painting people. Um, she's going to sit around about there, and she's got an umbrella, so you've got to get the proportion right. That house is going to sit further in the distance. So, you know, the fact that her feet are there and the horizon line of the house is up there, that should work. Okay. Now, there's a lot of foreground hill here. So that we need to get some darks in through here. 
sh foreground shadows. Um, and I think probably we're going to want a bit of bush action there just to stop the eye wandering out of that corner. Okay. And then that leaves us then with, that leaves us with this tree here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna have it a little bit narrow at the top there. I'm gonna do it slightly different from uh, the way it's painted there. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of sky through there. So there's not a lot of sky here. Not a lot of sky, that's okay. And I'm going to run some trunks up into it there. Okay, so now let's tackle step two. Um, step two, of course, is our blocking step, and that's where we get our darks established and our field color and so on. So I'm thinking here for this, we've got our darkest darks are gonna be probably down in these corners here, then this tree, and then we'll do this row of background trees, another tone or two back from there. And uh, for that, uh, we've probably got enough paint there at the moment. So I'll, just, I'll use a big flat brush here. Um, I don't want a, a nice, perfect brush. I want something that's a little bit rough. Okay, um, because I'm just gonna load up that paint there. And what I'm gonna do here is just create some bush shapes just by pushing the brush out. See all those rough edges over the path a little bit. We might keep that, we might not. Okay, so just a nice juicy dark. And, by creating those darks in the foreground, what that does is it, it causes the eye to look, look into the painting. And um, it's called a threshold, which uh, one of my art mentors, Jack White, you know, would talk about in his books is the idea of creating this threshold using darks. And I like that idea. I, I like the paintings that have that intimate little view into them. So I always try and incorporate that idea wherever I can. Okay, so I've just put that larger foreground tree in there. Now we'll shape that up, obviously, as we go. And uh, now let's get into these main trees at the back here. So they're going to be cooler in temperature, a lot more blue in there than red. Whereas these foreground ones are going to have a bit more red. And they're going to be lighter in value. So a touch of the white in there. Oops, I just picked up some extra red there. So a little bit more blue, a little bit more white. Okay, and that's probably a good tone, I think. I, I can see that that's just a nice sort of variation from what we've got here. I'll just run that in around my little lady who's going for a country walk. Okay. Now don't worry if you make these trees too big. We're gonna have a chance to reshape them when we put that sky in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a nice earthy tone to underpaint everything here. And to do that, what we're going to do is take a big chunk of this yellow ochre, okay, which is a good earthy colour, and, and a clip of the alizarin crimson, okay, and some white. Now I'll show you why we're going to use the white. We're going to light, go for a lighter value first. Okay. Now the reason is if I painted all of this in the same value, okay, um, then what would happen is it's going to look flat. We want to create a sense of depth. We want to have a feeling that you can actually walk into this painting. Um, so I'm going to get this really nice and light here. I'm going to use a little bit of water because this is our underpainting, so I don't mind if it's a bit thin. And I'm just going to just work this in, mer merge it up to that shadow tone of the underneath the trees there. Okay. Around my lady there. And, and I'm not gonna you know, do a portrait of the lady, I'm just going to do an indication that she's there, same as with the house. Okay, so we just cut round her and we start to shape up her, her dress there. Okay, and Vary your strokes up a little bit, get a little bit of variety in there, come up to this tree, the edge, pick up, I'm clipping into that sort of dark because it's not completely dry, and I'm just dragging that into the underpainting that we're doing here, okay? So that's all perfectly fine. Got a little bit over this side, which, uh, let me just get in some paint there. Okay. 
and you could use this underpainting if you want to shape up the tree on both sides. Okay. Now obviously I didn't mix up enough paint because that's fairly well used up all that paint. So let me just get a little bit more white. I don't need too much more white. I'm not going to add much more white at this stage. Another big chunk of the yellow ochre. It lives in crimson. Bit of a go up the white. Now you can see it's quite a bit darker. That's not what I want. I want that down there. See how that's darker than up there? But we can't jump to that just yet. So I'll just mix some white into one half of that paint and we'll just work that in. Okay. So vary your stroke up. There's no right or wrong stroke at this with what we're doing here. Yeah, make and see how that's looking and I think it's looking pretty good happy with that right, more yellow ochre more alizarin crimson a little touch of white okay and we're going to start seeing a variation now in this tone so as we come forward we want to get darker in value so less white paint and we want to get warmer as well. So I'm gonna have more red in that mix. Touch more blue and crimson. Don't need any more white now. Okay, so that yellow ochre, blue and crimson. You see that's quite a bit redder there. Probably a little bit too much. Let's knock it back a little. We have a bit more yellow ochre. Okay, now I've got a ton of paint up there, which I think is uh, not a bad idea. It just gives you plenty of paint to work with and I'm using a big canvas too um, this is being a 16 by 20 I think okay welcome back folks Rod Moore here with you again now this is dried off and uh, looking pretty good pretty happy with it so far uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to start detailing highlighting finishing touches step three of the Moore method we'll start at the back and we'll just work forward to the foreground. Um, so we've got a couple of distant trees here and here, and we've got this layer through here, then this one here, then these two, then we'll come in and we'll do the ground and so on. Pretty simple sort of approach. Uh, so let's get underway. We'll take our blue before it runs down the page there. Grab some of that. So I've just got ultramarine blue, lizard and crimson, yellow ochre, titanium white. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of the blue, a little bit of the yellow, a pinhead of the red, and some of that white there, okay? And you can see that's too blue. What we wanna do is put a little highlight color on these trees here, it's just a little bit too blue. So we'll add in some of that yellow there, okay? That makes it go green, and we need a bit more white. And is that the right color? I don't really know. But what I'm gonna do is just test though, 
and uh, difficult to sort of see which way the sun's coming from. I'm going to assume it's coming. Uh, no, we're going to assume it's coming that way. Okay, which means we'll put a bit of a shadow underneath the lady here. So if it's coming that way, let's just. Okay, still a little bit blue. Add a bit more yellow in there. And uh, let's just highlight up. Now, I stress this every week we do this show is don't lose the, the shadow part. Okay, keep as much of that shadow in there as we can. Okay. Whoop, that's a little bit too heavy handed. through like so stand back and have a look now it's gonna it's difficult to see is that gonna work or not until we start to get something else in there to really compare it to and to contrast it to so we'll just come a little further with our development a little pin out more red whoop that's a fair bit of red in that one that's okay it might make for some interesting tones and it needs to be darker than that tone there which it is and I'm just tapping that brush on and creating uh, the lighter part of the tree where the light might be coming down from over there like so so in hindsight that's probably just a little bit too strong in there and there we'll leave it for the moment and we'll come back to it or I can address it by making some stronger highlights on these main trees I'm just going to shift the tone up a little bit here got more of a brownie earthy tone to this tree just for a bit of variety. Okay, I'll we'll just wipe a little bit of paint out of that brush, get some more blue, some more yellow, and I'll just add into the bottom here. We're going to do this big tree in a couple of passes. Initially, a mid tone green, so just blue and yellow. Okay, and sunlight coming from this side again, and I will put further highlights over this. Touch, touching it over the sky area there. I'm just building it up bit by bit. Don't be in a rush to finish this.
big brush like so. Take a big swipe of this white here. Take some of this yellow ochre. Let's mix that together. Get a big chunk of the paint there. And then I'm just going to just work it in. I'm just using a combination of horizontal and vertical marks. And I'm going to come to this lady. And I'm going to let plenty of that underpaint seep through. A little bit of red again just to mix it up get some variety happening and we start to create a little bit of overlap now in the different marks that we're doing it's a good way to get that feel of wild grasses and Summer grasses, I think is probably a good way of describing it. up and under this tree here and then I'm going to put some nice tree trunks on that or under that so again you can see there's no real special brush technique that I'm applying here or anything like that it's really um, it's more about big sh getting the right shapes the right values and the right colors right temperature at the right time they're, they're the things that are more important getting some purples in there now too that's quite an interesting effect um, there's a little bit of the purpley tone on the brush when I pressed it in a bit harder it came out so I think that's darker accents in that lighter part up there now on this lady's dress again not here to paint a woman here so I'm just going to indicate That's the original painting that I was sort of inspired by. And uh, you know, there's our painting there. Obviously a lot less effort and work has gone into this. This would have been a master work that he might have spent days or weeks on. Um, but as a quick little demonstration to try and capture that sort of composition, I think it works well. So definitely one to have a go at. Take your time with it. I think the important thing is getting that horizon line up nice and high 
putting these trees back into the distance, this sort of S-shape path. Remember the main part of it there is uh, the main S there. And um, creating some interesting textures in the grasses I think is important as well. Have a go at this one, I think you'll enjoy it. And let me know how you go. And um, make sure you drop by our website, www.learntopaint.tv or moreartschool.com. Look forward to seeing you there. And until next time, happy painting and cheers for now.